Oh, hello everyone. Welcome back to Digger Evans Model Railway Channel. <clears throat> it's been a long while since I've done a video. I've been busy and uh, I'm hoping to uh, squeeze videos in where I can. Most of you know I have a, a 3D printer now, any cubic mono to resin printer. And I've been printing these little beauties, bridge sides. I have a lot to do because it's a long bridge that I've got and it's my intention not to show you how, how I print them because it's, there's nothing to see, it's a vat of resin and it, you can't see anything but how I'm going to make this into this and that's, uh, that's more or less, more or less finished ready to go to lay out not too much rust just enough to let you know it's in need of a little bit of maintenance up and down and uh, that's the other one that needs a little bit more maintenance there's a bit of rust going along on the flange plates at the bottom so it's actually a little bit less a little bit less uh, a little bit more sorry a little bit more weathered than the other and so for that we're going to start off with a blank one of these and the first thing we're going to do is give it an undercoat of a rust colour so it looks like that and I'm just going to show you that we're going to do it in stages I know you've seen me rust stuff before but I promise you this isn't all going to be rust rust and nothing but rust you'll notice here you see looking at the box for the the new latest Hydro and Steenbeck Ultra 2024. I've had a lot of people asking me about airbrushes and how do you use them, what's the best one and all this lot. I can honestly say if you're not used to airbrushing, you've never airbrushed, you haven't got an airbrush but you want to, get this little beastie. This is going to be ideal for every beginner because there's a collar on here that sets the limit of the colour control and the needle only lets certain amounts out and this actually teaches you it's actually teaching you how far back to hold the needle how much pressure you can put on and all that good stuff and uh, for that reason alone I recommend that you get this I, I paid I think 90 quid delivered or thereabouts you know and I got it from scale model shop on the internet there but have a look around just googling ultra hydro and steam back ultra 2024 and you'll get a beautiful little airbrush like this one it's not good for every single job but it'll cover most of them especially if you're a beginner it's going to be beautiful for you to use it has a 450 micron needle which is uh bigger than the other ultras the other ultra had a, a, a 200 micron a 400 micron this has 450 the other two are going to be discontinued and this little beastie is going to take the place of those two quite versatile we have the 200 micron one and we can carry on using that for a finer detail this is going to do the the big stuff and uh, it's going to be very good at it too so the next thing i need to do is show you what we're doing with with the base coat of rust and this is rust primer from AK now it does need a little bit of diluting before you can stick it on stick it on to anything uh, and so that's what we're going to do we're going to dilute some of that which I've already done obviously and uh, I've put it into this bottle it's around about 50 50 you know the consistency now guys it's uh, a similar consistency to milk give it a good shake in this little dropper bottle how I mix it, I don't mix it in tubs, containers sometimes you can mix it in the bowl if you're only using a small amount but I like to mix it in another dropper bottle and then I can put drops in you know and uh, put measured amounts in like this so I've got it set, the collar is set to prime it just says prime there on the top this rotates, there is there's a piece there where you can have it so you can move it just like any other airbrush and you don't have to but I'm using it prime because this is going to teach beginners 
absolute starters how to do it and it's going to be good fun for you all if you're just starting out so I'm just going to put a few drops in here about 10 has gone in there now I'm going to move us all over to the airbrush station sorry now let's get this right and I'm not going to switch the airbrush station on because it'll drown everything out that we're doing you won't be able to hear a thing so I'm just going to lightly now I've got it just above one atmosphere of pressure which is about 16 pounds and you notice how far away from it I am I'm going to have to uh, I'm going to have to use something some blue tack or something to hold it together because it's not not going to be here for us I didn't think so I'll oh, just stick it on the blue tack for now on that bottom edge you'll notice the distance away I am I'll try and get that better uh, I'm a good five or six inches away just push the lever down and then gently bring it back and it's going to throw that colour out beautifully ideal distance ideal amount of pressure and the ideal floor paint bearing in mind this is only an undercoat because what we're going to do is cover this in chipping fluid next when this is dried and that's going to be the next video I don't want to uh, give you all far too much to to get bored at in all in one video and we can see that now I'm, I'm just enriching the colours I'm thinking of areas where the rust would likely to sit and we'll discuss that in the next video where it's most likely to be now I'll just see if I've got enough to run across the top and we'll leave it like that for now just cover that bit now the next job is you can see some pale areas but it's got the I don't have to have complete coverage because not everywhere is it going to be shown through but it is acting as a base colour and we've just about emptied that now and I've shown you what I needed to show you this should dry pretty quickly but we do need we do need it to be very dry I'll just alter that lighting again this lighting is dreadful isn't it I'll sort something out for the next video with the lights and so what we need now is for this to thoroughly dry and then we'll crack on with the next level which is going to be the tipping fluid and also adding some bits of rust along this bottom lip places where rust and water would accumulate and rust would occur more thank you all ever so much for looking in that's all it was a quick do with the new airbrush and showing the resin prints that i'm doing and if you've got the money I'd suggest getting a resin printer because you, you can print all kinds of stuff for your layouts and not just for your layouts, for other stuff, you know. You never know when you might need it. And if you're thinking about an airbrush for the first time, you cannot, I repeat, you cannot go wrong getting this Ultra 2024. It's a marvellous thing. I'm so glad they sent it me. It's really nice. It's brilliant. That's all it is for now, folks. Thank you all ever so much for looking in. I appreciate each and every one of you. Take care of yourselves. I shall see you very soon on the next video. Bye-bye for now, my friends. Do take care.